Yay, welcome to Online Fellowship. We're so excited that everybody's here today to have a good time to talk about the Word of God and just to fellowship with one another and have prayer together. And today we're blessed, so blessed to have my spiritual daughter, Lee, sharing with us all the way from South Africa. And uh, she's always got a timely, on-time word from the Lord. And so we're looking forward to hearing what she's got to share with us today. So I'm going to ask uh, Brother Raymond if you would open us in prayer, and then we're just going to jump right on in so we can have some good conversation about what her topic is today. Yeah. Yes, Father God, we thank you for the honor of fellowshipping, Father, even though we're in different countries, Father God, across borders. We thank you for the, the opportunity just to be in your presence, and we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will dwell among us this evening yes. and this morning. And that we'll just be able to sense your presence and that yes. your word will be spoken, Jesus. And yes. that we'll just be touched by what Lee is about to share and that whoever watches this afterwards will, will just be touched, will be just, just touched by the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will work in the hearts and the minds and just change whatever needs to be changed and that the message will fall whether it needs to fall and that the ears will hear what they need to hear in Jesus name. Thank you. Amen. 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 All right, Lee, go for it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Hello everybody. Nice to see you all again. <laughs> um, the message today that I just felt I wanted to share, it's called five ancient truths for today. Woo. So if you want to make a note of that, get some scrapbook and a scrap piece of paper and a pen because I think it's going to be great if we can all just hang on to these for a little bit longer and maybe just meditate on them as we share. Some of them we've heard before, but it's a journey, right? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes yes. we have to hear things again and again. It's a so nice <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to make a note. Sorry, I'm just quickly making sure I can see everyone's chat box because, guys, we're going to be chatting tonight. So just okay. be prepared to chat. Uh, Doris uh, is in the chat box, so she said no. There we go. Hi, Doris. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Can she? Oh, okay. Go can ahead. she hear us? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. So, um, just before I start, I just wanted to. I don't know if you can do a show of hands or say I did, or if anyone saw the post in uh, that our mama shared with us this week um, about sh showing love to a gentleman that was very rude on one of her Facebook comments. Just um, if you had, if you did see it, say yay. If you didn't, then that's cool. I saw it. <laughs> okay. I, I All right. The person um, was very it was caustic. so awesome that she could answer him with love and that straight away changed the atmosphere, changed the attitude. Uh, it was so cool. So sort of, if you can keep that in mind, that's the premise of today's discussions. Um, I just want to quickly recap for those of us who have been on this journey so far, uh, with what we discovered, because it all sort of falls into the journey that we're going on. So initially when we chatted, uh, we discovered that the name above all names is the very breath we breathe. The second uh, thing we discovered was, remember who you are. You guys remember that discussion, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so just to remind you, you are uniquely designed, created, purposeful beings with a divine nature that is activated by going out and sharing your faith with the ability to overcome. All right, so that was it in a nutshell. So truth number one I would, I would like to share with us today um, is Genesis 1 verse 27. And I've, I think I've, this has been like a scripture we've shared almost on every session. <laughs> but again, that's worth repeating. <laughs> okay. So it says, um, I'm just going to use the I am that I am instead of God, guys. I just like that revelation, you know. So I am that I am created man in his own image. And in his image, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So uh, a little bit, uh, probably about a week ago, I was sitting and listening to a lecture. And it was like such a random lecture. But the professor turned around and said, um, do you know that the cornerstone of justice in every land is basically that scripture? It says that because you are made in the image of God, or I am that I am, you are equal before the law. So I thought that was, that was quite a revelation. <laughs> um, and that is the first truth. Uh, because of who you are, you know, wh whether the world tells you what you are, whatever, whatever, 
in, in our very justice, in the very essence of justice being dished out, the fact is that because you have a divine nature, because you carry divine whatever in you, no matter whether you're the hobo on the street or the king of England, supposedly, <laughs> you are supposed to be seen as equal before the law. So I thought that was pretty awesome. But therefore, if, if that's true for you and I, then I want to say every person is uniquely designed and created a purposeful being with a divine nature, with the ability to overcome, made in the image of I am, I, that I am, and equal before the law, right? So that is like a When you say equal ancient before the law, truth. what are you saying? So I just, you know, okay. was thinking, and, and I kind of want us to please chat about this in the chat box. It's interesting that creation is questioned and deemed archaic in today's society, right? So I just want to, if you guys can just sort of chat with me in the chat box and say, what do you believe the consequences are of sort of eliminating creation in today's society, introducing, you know, the theories that we hear <laughs> left, right and center? Um, yeah, just, just kind of share, what do you think has been the consequences of that today? Um, if you can... Despair, yes. Dad says despair. I agree, Teddy, <laughs> completely. And we, we sense it so thick and fast these days. Gee whiz. <laughs> Ray, what are you saying? <laughs> Doris, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm not sure what you're asking. <laughs> no, Ray is typing like an essay, it looks like. Oh, there we go. Eliminating creation eliminated the existence of God. Yeah. So what is the consequence of that, though? How, how do you think that's affected? If everybody has that in them, how do you think it's affected, you know, people? How do, you know, how they react, what they do? People relying on their own strength. We're just a blob. <laughs> Preach it, mama. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So, with that in mind, I want to bring us to the second fundamental truth. And, uh, phew, this, was, this was interesting. We are responsible. That is the second fundamental truth. Mm. We are responsible. Romans 14, 10 to 12 says, For we will all stand before the judgment seats of God, so then each of us will give account to God himself. We are responsible for our lives, we are responsible for ourselves, and we are responsible for our choices. Okay, so therefore, <laughs> that also means that every other person is responsible in, in exactly the same way. If I can just quickly share then Galatians 6, verse 4 to 5 says, let us each one test his own work and then his reason, and then have his reason to boast within himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each of us have to bear our own load. Mm. So again, I'm just going back to things that we shared there. The reason there's despair, the reason people are relying on their own strength, the reason people are just a blob <laughs> is because the essence of who you are has been taken away and therefore your responsibility has been taken away. So what do you do? You just blob around, you know, um, blame everybody else for your problems, woe is you, be a victim. And when Doris says, when you say everyone, it must be those you know versus those who have not heard the news. Yes, it is, but at the same time, uh, Doris, we're referring to literally everyone who's created right now, and I'll explain a little bit why I say that, and uh, yeah, then we'll start eliminating everyone. But right now, I'm talking about everybody on planet Earth, um, not necessarily believers versus non-believers. Okay, just so there's clarity on that. All right, um, so I just wanted to quickly sum up something here. Sorry, guys. Okay, so there's there's Two, there's two truths that, that I just wanted to go over again. Number one is because of who we are, we know that we are responsible. Whether you believe or have given your heart to Jesus or not, you're still responsible. And I think that ancient truth has been missing in society today. Um, I don't know how much news you guys are exposed to, but like, yeah, for example, in our country, in South Africa, there is a major war between races at the moment. and the heart sort of thing is people are not remembering who they are and they're not taking responsibility. So everyone is like literally being blown by the wind. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really, really hard. So if you see what's happening, uh, 
the, there's a, a, a lecturer that I was listening to. His name's Jordan Peterson. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he was saying that he goes and lectures, obviously, to, to a couple of universities, and he says he's noticed his sessions are mostly young men because he's preaching one thing, responsibility. Young men are looking for responsibility. At the moment, there's no responsibility for them. All they know is, okay, I'm no good. I can't do anything. You know, I'm a bad... I'm, a, I'm bad for existing, basically, you know, they're being, they're front and centered by all these crazy movements, and in a nutshell, all they can do is sit and play PlayStation, you know, that's, that's their reason to wake up in the morning, and that's not what they've been created to do, and I think that's sort of the, that despair that, I think, Teddy, you mentioned that, that despair that's being experienced is because of that reason. Uh, hi, Doris, in the north of Texas, US. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yes. So, sorry. Yeah, so I, just, I was just reading Doris's. She's just stating where she's from, the north of Texas. Very exciting. <laughs> okay. So, I just want to then lead into the third truth. Okay. And that is unconditional love. All right. In a nutshell, if we have to explain it in a nutshell, which is very difficult, but anyway, let's just describe it in a nutshell. Unconditional love is number one about giving choice. So we go back to our story in the Garden of Eden, where I am that I am created us. And he said to Adam and Eve, eat of any of this fruit, uh, any of the trees of any of the fruits, but not of this tree and not of this fruit. He gave them choice. That is unconditional love. Number one. But the second part of unconditional love is then in spite of the choice taken, still loving. So it doesn't mean take the consequences of the choice away, but in spite of the choice, still loving that person. Um, so that, that is in a natural unconditional love. So, you know, <laughs> I know we all know the scriptures of 1 Corinthians 13, but I just, in, in that description that I just read, I would just like to read it to you guys because it was <laughs> it was such a beautiful revelation when I understood that now. So I believe uh, the first part explains unconditional love and then the second part you'll see confirms that it's about um, choosing to love in spite of the choice. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 13, I'm reading all of the scriptures today basically is from the Amplified, sorry guys, you know me, I like uh, the women's version. <laughs> okay. So it says, love endures long and is patient and is kind. Love is never envious, nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful. It is not vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. It does not conceit. It's not arrogant and inflated with pride. It's not rude. It doesn't act unbecomingly. Love does not insist on its own rights or its own way. For it is not self-seeking, it is not touchy or fretful or resentful, it does not take account of evil, it does not rejoice in injustice or unrighteousness, but it rejoices when right, rightness, righteousness sorry, and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the very best of a person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. And it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails. Love, uh, sorry, as for prophecy, gifts, interpreting, um, all of that shall pass away. And they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. Uh, for knowledge is fragmentary and prophecy is fragmentary. But when the complete and perfect, total and imperfect will all vanish away, love will supersede them all. So. If, if we just look at, I think it's verse 7 and 8, it literally explains that in spite of choice, love is still there. You know what I'm saying? Which is so, so incredible. So I just want to basically, I think we'll only cover three tonight because I, I feel like I almost want to hop on this a little bit more if that's okay. But in this journey that we've been, you know, these ancient truths, um, understanding who we are, and then understanding we're responsible for ourselves, and then understanding unconditional love, I almost feel like before we get to the point of salvation, we need to understand these truths. Because the, un the unconditional love, I feel we have to almost like apply to yourself right now. And I almost want to ask you guys that. Uh, it's something I've been thinking 
thinking about and I feel I need to work on that a bit. But if you can take that uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and literally like turn it around and apply it to yourself and say, you know, is that how I love me? You know, I know it's, it's my kind of it like weird, but honestly, it's, it's the beginning of, of our journey. Because if we can apply that unconditional love to ourselves, then loving for, um, I am that I am and loving others becomes so much easier because we know then how to love. Um, and if we ought to know, you know, I can't love myself like 1 Corinthians 13, then that brings us back to the foot of the cross. It brings us back into the very presence of Jesus where we can say, listen, I, I can't. I feel this is, I can't love myself like this. And then literally unburden ourselves in his presence. You know what I'm saying? And he brings healing and he brings salvation to that very area that we're struggling with. And, you know, the more we think about it, it's such a beautiful journey, almost of discovery. Um, and we don't go and come to the cross just once in our lives. I mean, I know all of us have experienced that. You come initially, you know, um, to be born again. But you often, in, in your journey throughout life, you keep repeating that journey. You know, you come back for different reasons and find deeper salvation for very different areas in your life. So I just, I just felt like these are such beautiful ancient truths. And we know it because, yes, obviously we've grown up, you know, in a very different um, Christian experience. I don't know how else to put it right now. But the truth is it's been so lost and it's been taken away, so almost like ripped away from society today that I just felt I want to share it again because unfortunately the messages that people are hearing is not this, you know. So I just felt if I can share this with us today, you know, then maybe we can be inspired and first of all look inwardly, but then kind of share that then, you know, with others and let that truth become a reality in their lives as well. To lead them back to that place of you know these ancient truths so i'm not going to share number four and five yet <laughs> i just feel i wanted to kind of leave it here because you know love unconditional love you know let uh, i almost want to say let's have that for homework <laughs> uh, and just go and meditate on that that uh, 1 corinthians 13 um, from verse 4 basically to 8 if we can just ponder on that and apply it to us and you know then come before Jesus and say if this is the situation this is what I need to deal with and get that healing and get being set free um, from not being able to love in that space so that when we share number 4 and 5 we are totally ready to do it so thank you guys if there's any questions if anything you want to share I uh, saw so hallelujahs and amens and love is the foundation of everything that is how we overcome ladies and gentlemen love unconditional love <laughs> awesome is there anything else anyone wants to add to that and you can unmute yourselves please thank you Doris <laughs> uh, I, think, um, I, mean, I think that's, I think that's beautiful uh, it, it, it all begins right there Daddy, oh, right. can you hear me I can't hear you say like uh, can you hear me now? Like, like, a, like You're a going character. in and out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Say again. I said, can you hear me now? No, still can't hear you. <laughs> I can. Oh, you can? No, I was just saying, that is, I mean, that is, you just summed up, I mean, that is the foundation of the love. I mean, the love, everything oh. begins right there at the foot of the cross. If you can't, if you don't get that revelation, it's, it, I mean, that is your foundation of your Christian walk <laughs> right there. The love and what was and the love that he showed us when he got on that cross. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh oh. Can you hear me? Where did Lee go now? We lost her. What yeah, happened? it looks like it. Oh my goodness! What happened? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Are you able to unmute yeah. your microphone, Doris? If I unmute it. There she is. Lee's coming back. Yeah. Welcome back, Lee. Sorry about that. Yeah. The signal in Cape Town went woo. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> so sorry, Teddy. As you were saying, can you repeat all the stuff you just said? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that the like you were saying, the revelation. It's it's so important to get that revelation of what of of the love of the fact that what what Jesus done on the cross was the foundation of love that we can never ever ever truly understand. Yeah. And, and everything moves from that point forward. And if we don't get that revelation, we continue to have to go back until yeah, we eventually absolutely. actually digest the fact of what that love truly means. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And if I can just almost say, I feel like 
if we if we understand those first two, the, the the time when you actually come before Jesus at the cross is so much more meaningful. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, as opposed to, and, and please guys, just hear me, but as opposed to standing in a service and putting up my hand and giving my heart to Jesus, as you know, but if you've gone on the journey of like, this is who I am and I have to be responsible for my life and oh my word, this is unconditional love and then coming to the house, I mean, how beautiful is that? That is such an intimate, beautiful relationship. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. true born again experience, you know? <laughs> Sorry, yeah. That's my next sense word. <laughs> Very well said, Lee. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful message that you've, you've given us. Um, something that I've just been sitting and thinking about is when it comes to unconditional love, if you look at love in a worldly view, mm. people love each other, they argue, they get upset with each other, and they stay cross with each other, yeah. and eventually the relationship might end. Yeah. But with unconditional love, it's different. Yes, yeah. you, you might get upset a bit, you might get cross with a person, and disagree on some stuff but mm. with the unconditional love from Christ that's within us it's that relationship is mended that relationship so filled with love it still continues yeah. it's, it's it's as if with the world the, the the love and the relationship or the hatred or whatever is is one if you yeah. upset there's no love it moves away with it but yeah. with the unconditional love you've got the love and being upset or disagreeing is separate. You, yeah. You, th that love doesn't, doesn't go away. When you forgive that person and you're not angry with each other anymore, that love is still there. It doesn't Absolutely. go away with it. Uh, yeah. I just heard something so interesting the other day, and I thought, that oh, this is so brilliant. He says, uh, this, it was a lecture I was attending, I know I refer to it a lot, but it was just oh, so cool. He says that marriage is basically you finding someone that you feel you can relate to and saying to them, listen, yeah, you're hooked and you're sticking with me until, you know, the end of time. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. We've got to figure this out together, but you're not allowed to go anywhere ever, you know? And he says in that knowledge that this person will never leave you. That is only when you start to grow. I was like, wow, that's so true. And then you think of your relationship with Jesus and that's exactly what he's saying. He's like, you're stuck with me, kid. That's it. <laughs> you know, I'm not going anywhere. And so in that moment, you can just relax and literally just, you know, be yourself and start discovering who you are. So I just thought that was such a great analogy of marriage, but then beyond that, of our relationship with Jesus. Yeah. It's like that safety of knowing they're not going anywhere, you know. Whereas I think with, like you mentioned, Ray, that worldly love, there's always this like, oh, but if I mess up, it's over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and you're walking on eggshells. I'm like, oh, I better not. I better not. You know, it, there's no yeah. security yeah. in that. And you can never truly discover who you are because you're always on the shallow, you know, plane to ensure that nothing bad happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> it's kind of an uh, all or nothing kind of a proposition that most people operate in. Either you do yeah. everything the way I like it, or, you know, that's the end of our relationship, quote unquote, which then is, yeah. of course, no relationships. So yeah. There has to be a give and take, and sometimes one messes up and sometimes the other one does, but that there's a mutual acceptance and mm -hmm. a reception of one another to realize and make allowances for one another because we love and we know we're not perfect, but because we have Christ in us and we're brothers and sisters, we need yeah. to figure out how to stay still connected and embracing one another rather than separating out everyone to go sit in a corner. <laughs> we didn't yeah. have fellowship with one another, right? We need to be able yeah. to find ways to keep the relationship moving forward. And in time, whatever differences there were, either get mellowed out or they don't matter anymore. Exactly. But in time, we made them such a big thing that it destroyed <laughs> everything. And that's sad that we do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. Wow. It, it is sad. And like you said, Judy, with, if, if you want to kind of refer back to your worldly view and you look how people are today and it's, this is how I want it to be and there's no budging. But the thing is, it comes from both parties. So both wanted their way and not willing to, to budge. But with a 
the unconditional love um, with Christ in us, like you say, it's, it's a give and take. And the world doesn't see that. It's, <clears throat> it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a beautiful message. Well, um, guys, I have to leave you unfortunately eleven thirty because I got to run to a meeting at eleven forty-five. Okay. Get my thing back up and running. So, love you all. Okay, thanks, Chad. All right, See you later. people. Okay. See you guys later. Bye. 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 Yes. <clears throat> okay. So, um, also, I think another thing too, when people are contrary or hateful against us whether it comes from the spirit of the world or from immature Christians or carnal Christians, our response to that will show either our depth yeah. of love or our understanding yeah. of the Father's love by how we respond and choose to be embracing even though they might not, you know, and yeah. a willingness to, to go to them and just say, can we talk about it? And then whether they do or don't, at least you, you are the one that's, given the olive branch, if you will, yeah, yeah. to have a relationship of some sort. And um, anyway, yeah, it's, it's quite a journey of love that we all have to uh, experience in our lifetime. And it's not always uh, easy, that love walk. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Yeah. But, you know, um, I'm just thinking about, you know, with, with Facebook and everything being so much in the news and, you know, social media has almost brought this, um, dynamic of if you if you offend me, you know what I'm saying, and you there is no that is like smothering any chance of relationship because how can yeah. you live your life thinking oh, okay am I going to offend this person you know what I'm saying so I think if there ever was a desperate cry for unconditional love it is now you know yeah. um, just just to love people to that point where they're like okay wow it's you know come on guys this is what unconditional love feels like. We hear your cry, you know. It's just, wow. It is. And I also think, Lee, that the, the only way that the world is going to see it is from us. If we don't yep. show them that unconditional love, they're not going to see it anywhere Absolutely. else. Mm. Yep. Mm. That's part of the next number four. Okay, just letting you know. <laughs> oh, come on, give us a You're already on the journey. <laughs> no, I need, to, I need you guys to come back for more. Come on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Something that stood out for me was what you said here at the end, towards the end, is that we also need to love ourselves. And yeah. We need to love and ourselves to unconditionally as well because we do mess up. We make mistakes. And that is, and and that is tough, right? That is so yeah. tough. And, you know, so tough. often we feel like, oh, that's the most selfish thing we can do. But actually, no. You know, that is, that is the very thing Jesus is. Well, if, if you look how Jesus what he spoke to us about, the parables, everything. It yeah. all points to that. That is why we're here, you know, to be complete in his love. You know, um, he keeps talking about it so much, which is what a part of what I'll say next time. But the amount of time he talks about love and tells you to love, oh, my goodness, it's incredible. Yeah. So that is our journey. And in that, I mean, how much more can we love because we know how to love, you know? It's just, it's like yeah. a ripple domino effect. <laughs> it's so exciting. So, yeah, yeah you thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, because we're usually programmed from an early age yes. of the things that we're doing wrong all the time, whether it's yeah. as we're in our first five years at home and we're learning how to navigate life, and then through school, when we're always tested and we come short, and <laughs> it just... It helps all of the time to keep compounding that message on ourselves that we're messing up and falling short. And so we get hard on ourselves in that way. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. It takes some retraining to talk ourselves out of that and reparent ourselves now as adults to love ourselves now in the biblical way yes. so yeah. that we can be healthy and, and whole. Otherwise, yeah. we are our own worst enemy, and then that's terrible. If you're the, if you're your own worst enemy, and you're in your camp, your own camp, you can't get away from yourself. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so we, you have, can, we have to we learn how to become our best friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's we something I learned from you, Mom. That you enjoy spending time with yourself. You know, yes, that I is do. such a unique 
gift to be able to do that. But I also just want to say in the same breath that unconditional love doesn't mean you don't go through the consequences of your choices. Those yeah. are still going to happen. The thing is you have to overcome that and still love your sp- yourself in spite of the fact that you might have made bad choices. You know what I'm saying? And that you had to go through the consequences of it. So, you know, unconditional love doesn't mean, oh, you soppy and sweet and, you know, a walkover or a pushover. In oh, fact, yeah. it yeah. takes strength and you have to put boundaries. And you know what I'm saying? It has to be a growth path. But you're there no matter what. I think that's actually the core of it. You know, yeah. no matter what, you're here. You're <laughs> you know? <with> yourself. <laughs> So yeah, right? <laughs> so yeah, awesome yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah, that is good. I like what Doris right. said. She said, I have chosen to treat those things as take the high road when you can't yeah. tell from things online, assume the best always. And hey, that, there we go. that's so true because online yes. you can't tell yeah. in a text the tone of what somebody's saying. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, she says, I'm still learning to love me better. Yeah, we're all on that journey, Doris, for sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and Judy, something important that you said is to love yourself <clears throat> biblically. Mm. Uh, if you don't love yourself biblically, it's going to be all self-centered. It's yeah, all going to be about me yeah. and mm. what I want out of life and walking over people because I love myself. Mm-hmm. But if you love yourself biblically, you can love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. And Corinthians says, love is not proud and not arrogant. And not, so there we go. We've got the guideline. Yeah. That's yep. the boundaries that established right there. There's the boundaries. Yeah. There we love go. Stay in a healthy place of what true love is, the essence of true love. Yeah. Because the world defines yeah. love by so many other ways. But the essence of the godly love is yeah. has those kind of boundaries. Which somebody yeah. said something the other day, which kind of struck me interesting that hate comes from the devil and um, love will always has always been and always will be because that's God God is love so hate will come to an end hallelujah wow <laughs> that is a powerful, powerful. yeah because love will continue but hate will eventually yeah. come to an end and so all the that, is- that the enemy has all the hatred and all that spewing that we're seeing all over the world today it's like he's just having this uh throw up attack you know where he's just yeah. going crazy. out because it's about to come to an end because praise yeah. the Lord, jesus is coming soon thank you that. jesus but wow. uh, that's the closer we get the more he just spews out all that stuff because it's going to come to an end and love will prevail yeah. wow that's can't wait for that day yeah so Doris says she's been reading Bren Brown, and she talks about this topic. I haven't heard of Bren Brown. I don't know, um, but we'll have to check her out. That's awesome. Oh, Brene. Okay. okay. Brene. <laughs> okay. okay. Sometimes that text typing goes a little bit strange. <laughs> but anyway, that's awesome. Awesome. That was really good, uh, Lee. I think that uh, how we can pray for and minister to one another today is yeah. just by loving one another in prayer. I mean, just mm-hmm. actually praying over each other. Yeah. Uh, um, words of love and affirmation because we are God's daughters and sons and we are his kids and he loves us with an everlasting love and an unconditional love and his arms are always underneath us cradling us you know and bringing us through life and or you know arm and arm linked as we are maturing in him and uh it's just a precious image to have that in our hearts no matter how down we might feel a couple of days ago i was having a little bit of a downer and i went for a little walk and just said talk to the lord a little bit and just lifted me up you know in that kind of way that he does so beautifully and it's just when you you know how to tap into that then our downer moments can just really be moments instead of days and weeks. <laughs> Sometimes people stay in yeah. a downer for months, yeah. But it can yeah. be moments when we can come back into that understanding that, you know, this too shall pass. Uh, tomorrow's another day. Things will happen differently down the road. But in the meantime, you know, it's not the end of the world right now. <laughs> so, you know, keep on keeping on, basically. Yeah. yeah. So it takes a lot of self talk that we have to do with ourselves sometimes. It does. 
that's why it's important to be your own best friend because if you're not then you call yourself stupid and you're so you know you never amount to much you know la 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 that kind of garbage language yeah. i can't even think of things that say like that now because i don't talk to myself that way <laughs> or to others either so but sadly so many have and um that's yeah. the go-to default message that they hear and it's very self-defeating okay <laughs> Everybody got quiet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> pondering. <laughs> yes, I'm pondering. All right. Uh, well, Doris isn't able to use a microphone because she's in a library setting. So we'll just, I'm going to just pray over her. And um, then I'll have um, whoever.